What's going on Surface Squad? Today I'm going to be giving my review on the newly released Watch Dogs Legion. So if that sounds like something that interests you, then stay tuned. That's coming up next. Welcome back all you guys and girls. So first and foremost, if you're into gaming and you're into Xbox and soon Xbox Series X, then why not hit that subscribe and bell icon and I'll be bringing you all the latest and greatest on all the upcoming games. But for now, you're here because you want to know what Watch Dogs Legion is actually like. Is it any good? Is it worth buying? Or is it pretty much the same as what's already been done in the previous incarnations? In all honesty, it's kind of a little bit of both. It doesn't stray too far away, it is a little bit similar. But it also is a little bit fresh. I've got to admit, I'm looking forward to the multiplayer content that should be coming out future in the year. And I'm also quite intrigued by what they're doing with the actual game itself. Now, if you don't actually know anything of Watch Dogs, which to be perfectly honest, it's been a long time since I've played a Watch Dogs game, so I couldn't remember any of it whatsoever. The basics premise, you play as a member of DedSec, which is kind of a, how can I put it, it's kind of a rebel alliance and it basically means that you have the task of trying to stop a kind of self-imposed military company that's oppressing the state or the city. So the main thing that I would actually hit on first would be, if you do not enjoy any type of stealth in your game, this probably won't be the one for you. Now, that brings me to the next point. You don't actually have a permanent kind of central character. They've they've completely gone away from that in this one, and you just have the whole DedSec organization as your team. So whoever you recruit, they will be your kind of task force as such, and you'll be relying upon them. Now, there's no point sugarcoating it. I was a little bit worried about this. I was kind of worried about the fact that there's no main protagonist. So how would that actually work? Would it hold up or would it make the game fall completely flat? Now, I've got to admit, I think they've done a good job and it does, for the most part, tend to actually work. I feel like I would still like one lead character to kind of fall back on, but I can definitely see where they're going with this and it is a bit of a fresh idea, so I actually quite like it. One thing to definitely note though, is that you can actually activate permadeath in this game. Now, I'm quite a big fan of things such as that, however I'm not the best at stealth, so I was a little bit worried with this. But it does kind of ease you in. In this game, it gives you a free, maybe three, four, even maybe five missions after the tutorial, before the permadeath mode actually completely kicks in, and if you do die before then, it's not going to actually destroy your game. So what you can do, just kind of go around and gather some units of your liking. And that way you're going to make it so that even if one or two does die after that fourth or fifth mission, you're still going to have people to continue on with. It kind of gives you a bit of a safety net and it makes the game quite enjoyable. I feel that the permadeath in this game is kind of needed. Without it, it just feels like there's no real sense of danger as such. There's, it, it just doesn't seem to work for me. Now, London itself actually looks really, really nice. I think they've done a really good job on it. Being from London, I actually really, really like some of the aspects of it and think they've done really well on the actual designs. Which leads me to my next point. Basically, this game will be for players that like to kind of deviate. If you just did the main storyline, this wouldn't be the longest game in the world. And I don't think it would actually probably be worth your money if that's all you were going to do. However, this game does have a lot to actually do. And it kind of revolves mostly, to be perfectly honest, around that recruiting aspect. The recruiting part is probably the most enticing part, as you can get a lot of variations and a lot of fun characters on your side. Whether it be a hitman, a beekeeper or someone who is very very stealthy like the spy. Obviously it's all down to you who you want in your team and who you want to swap between. Another cool aspect is that you can actually search the whole of the map looking for kind of I'd say secrets but I'd also say collectibles 
and that's one of the main aspects of the game that part will be taking you most of the game so if you're someone who likes to find every single thing every nook and cranny and all the hidden secrets as such this game will definitely take you a while to complete as although the map doesn't seem the largest there is still quite a lot to it now if I were to sum this up so that it would make people kind of work out whether or not they liked it as such I would kind of say it's very similar in style to a Grand Theft Auto but kind of with more stealth involved and a lot of fun gadgets that can be had and can be worked into your builds as such. Now obviously like I said the recruiting is a major part of this but also so are the gadgets. You can unlock these with tech points and it kind of makes it so that you can have your own playstyle as such. If you want to be a really stealthy character, then chuck on your AR cloak. That way you'll be able to be invisible and you'll be able to make sure you get those stealth takedowns. If you didn't care for that, then why not pick a character that has a G36 and absolutely mow everyone down. While you're doing that, why don't you hack a drone and get them to shoot at your opponents as well. Now, while the tech skills are nice, I found that there was a few that really weren't quite up to par compared to some of the others. There are some that are really nice and there are some that you probably will have to have in your build, such as either the spider bot or like I said, the AR cloak. Both of those are really good, as are the AR shroud, where you kind of mask the enemies that are on the floor, so once you've taken them down, they're not going to be found by anyone or spotted. But some of the tech skills, and I would say some of the weapons are also not probably the best, your starting pistol is quite nice, however after that you get an SMG, which I would say is actually really good. But other than that you can also get a shotgun and a grenade launcher, and to me at the moment they just, they, they felt a little bit subpar. But then again I suppose what did I expect taking the grenade launcher into a game that's kind of devised around being stealthy. One thing that I felt felt quite fluid was actually the driving. It, it is quite nice, it is really good because you can have an auto drive feature which does take I would say probably about 10 times longer than normal. Three days later. However it is worth it as you're probably just going to go the exact way you should and you're not going to deviate and fingers crossed you won't run anyone over. Even though on autopilot in an ambulance I did still actually manage to kill a civilian which was a little odd to me. Now for full disclosure I have not completed this game but I have put enough hours into it and done enough side quests and such to kind of give my overall opinion and ultimately I feel like it is a really nice addition to the franchise. In general like I said they have a lot going for this game it really does it looks I think it looks quite nice. Now I may be swayed in its favour because it's based around London and I know a lot of the landmarks because I'm from there and I actually really enjoy kind of just driving down the street as such. So hopefully this won't sway my review but I actually think they've done really really well with the actual architecture and the street designs and things such as that. Although some of them do seem ever so slightly smaller than the scale they should be. But I'm guessing there's not too much you can do about that because they have to do it to a certain map style. So what's the storyline? The storyline in itself actually wasn't too bad to be perfectly honest. The part I'm up to now it seems quite good. It drives it along. It's quite a nice little storyline. But again with these games most of your time will be consumed by kind of doing side missions, exploring. If you're not the kind of person that likes to, say for example, collect things, for example, masks, collectibles, and just generally go around the map trying to find certain items and trying to kind of unlock the map, find hidden secrets, and just have fun in that kind of aspect. If none of that actually floats your boat, I think this may be a game that you may want to stay clear of, as I think most of this game, it is kind of a game where you could do the storyline quite quickly if you just wanted to progress straight through that, but most times during these games you're not going to be doing that. You'll be searching for other areas, you'll be doing side missions, you'll be unlocking boroughs, you'll be doing lots of different aspects and lots of different things as long as you're intrigued and as long as it's keeping you amused. Now speaking of amused, 
There's a few things in this that I think are really good. Like it starts off very strong and kind of sets you out to go to a little arena and do some underground fighting and such. And that's pretty much after the opening tutorial or opening mission as such. So it does start off very strong. The only thing I feel like it does fall off a little bit the further it goes into the game because it kind of starts to feel a little bit repetitive. It's not terrible by any means, but after a while you do tend to find that it does seem a little bit bland or flat. Now like I said, they have got multiplayer coming out in about, I believe it's about a month's time. So hopefully that will pick the game back up again. And I think if they did put certain things into this game, it could make it a little bit fresher. Because in general, the mechanics of it are really good and are actually fun. It is just one of those games that the further on you get, the, like I said, the kind of more repetitive it does tend to be a little bit. Now, the game is pretty much brand new and it does have a lot going for it. Like I said, there's plenty of vehicles to steal. Uh, appropriate, sorry. There's absolutely ridiculous amounts of characters to actually recruit and they all have their own perks, backgrounds, some are very fun and some are absolutely ridiculous. One minor gripe that I have got is that some of the best players, if you're trying to recruit them before you get them in the storyline, such as a hitman or a beekeeper, it's it's a little odd how they do it. Basically, it's down to kind of luck. You have to keep going to certain areas and kind of hope that you're going to find them eventually. It doesn't seem to be any kind of time scale or anything involved. It's just down to random luck, random days, and just hoping that you will find them eventually. I've tried it quite a few times and myself, I've still not found a hitman in the location that I know he is supposed to be. Now, it wouldn't be a true review without going into some of the negative aspects and some of where the game kind of falls short. Now, as I've said before earlier on, uh, one of the aspects that it falls short on is definitely it does feel a little bit repetitive the more you play the game. But I definitely think once the multiplayer's out, it will give it a breath of fresh air. It's the same as most games. After a little while, you feel like you've kind of seen and done it all. Another issue would definitely be there are still some glitches and some issues around the game itself. Uh, one such that I have found is definitely the game can in itself crash. I've had it happen two or three times so far, but I've heard on PC it can be a little bit more. Now, for me, it tended to be right near the start when, like I was saying earlier, with the fighting arenas. I didn't have it break my game as such, I just had to reload and start again. So hopefully it's not game breaking for anyone, it definitely wasn't in my case, but it can be a bit of a pain if you've got right to the end of a fighting championship and then it puts you straight back to the start. Or, in my case, it kind of just completely glitched out and it was telling me to still beat the guy that was on the floor. Another thing I've been told is that there are a few issues with the audio. Now, I haven't really noticed this myself, but I've been told one of the guns and a few of the vehicles kind of have audio glitches. Like they either don't sound completely done or one of them didn't actually make the correct noise. Something along those lines. Like I said, I can't actually verify it because I haven't had it myself, but I have had a couple of subscribers tell me. Another thing that I've read on Reddit is that there is one vehicle that when it gets shot at too much, I believe because it's armor plated, instead of exploding, it kind of levitates and floats in the air. I'm pretty sure that one's not intended. And finally, definitely not game breaking, but it is noticeable sometimes, and that's the lip syncing. Sometimes you will just notice that it do doesn't quite match up. Now, it's not that bad, and it's definitely not Mass Effect Andromeda bad, but you can notice it from time to time. Now, all in all, I have to admit, I am having an absolute blast of this game. I really am. There's a lot of things you can do in it, there's a lot of fun to be had, and there's a lot to explore. It really is. That you really can actually just kind of have a complete day of going around the map trying to find collectibles and such or trying to find hidden content it really is quite fun and again like i said with the multiplayer coming around the corner that means that it should actually have a little bit more of a lifespan which is good 
So even if you've completed the main story, hopefully there'll be more to do as a standalone once you've got that little bit of multiplayer and hopefully some DLC down the line. I think this is a really nice game and would I recommend it? Honestly, probably so, yes. Like I said, I, I may be swayed a little bit because it's set in London, but I do think it's a very good game. Is it perfect? No, not, not by a long shot. It is not, if you're looking for perfection, this is not the game for you. If you do not like stealth, this is probably not the game for you. If you didn't like the first Watch Dogs, very possibly this might not be the game for you. It still is along that lines. But with this, they've kind of mixed it up a little bit. So I feel like going forward in the future, they could make an absolutely amazing game. Unfortunately at the moment, it is not quite there, but it is definitely a fun game to play there'll be multiplayer involved so pretty much if you enjoy things like gta and if you enjoy a little bit of stealth in your games and you like exploring then i think you'll probably like this game too as always guys and girls i hope that's helped you a little bit and like i said if you're into xbox and of course xbox series x once it's at then why not hit that subscribe and bell icon and i'll bring you all the latest and greatest and some reviews and fun gameplay as well as always, take care, I'll see you on the next day.